Ah, good evening and welcome to Rasslecast with myself, Peter Metalid, and my ever lovely co host. Me, of the Dark Man Raven. Hello, and it's that time again where we are back sitting in front of TVs or computers listening and, you know, yeah, whatever. But we're back for WWE Survivor Series 2014, oh, which, yeah. unlike most of the pay per views, already gone past, you know, what's the last? I can't remember the last one. What was the last one? Hell in a Cell, wasn't it? It was. Uh, Oh, so, yes, yes, I'm losing track, you know, and you getting old in my day. Yeah, um, that being quite good, this one was also quite good. This Survivor Series was actually quite a good, uh, quite an assorted pay per view, especially quite good since we had a, uh, a really big shot return for those who didn't read the dirt sheets, unlike me and Pete here who did read the dirt sheets, but we knew he was coming yeah. back. And for all you, all those network complete bastards, also got it, or new subscribers to the network also got this for free, which the UK yeah. didn't. But anyway, we'll go on to that. Yeah. So. Remember, we, <sighs> remember last podcast we were all like, hey, it's coming out tonight. Oh, I can't wait till after this podcast. We'll totally buy the network. And yeah. then 20 minutes beforehand, fucked in the ass. Right. Pretty much, like, Right in there, you know, with the biggest thing you can find, and it went in dry. Ugh, WWE, and now there's a permanent delay on it. Anyway, so we'll go over Right, so we'll talk about that. Right, now to, we're going to do normally the podcast as what we do, but after it, we think it's not really going to achieve the time we want. So CM Punk was on Colt Cabana's uh, podcast, uh, I think it was, I don't know, last night, the night before, I don't know if it was a few days ago, it and was, he finally... Uh, yeah, it was, la- it was last night, well, it came out last night in England time, I know, because I was up all night, so, <laughs> I know, I didn't, you know, I didn't sleep with that young intern, I was up all night! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, Punk was on Colt Cabana's, finally telling all the truth, all the dirty little secrets, everyone we wanted to, he spilt the beans, he literally, well, if he had any beans in front of me, he spilled them, he would have done. It was, I think it was like an hour and a half long, or to two hours long, it was quite a long one, and right. he lets go everything again, and we'll talk about that, because uh, that was interesting, I yep. didn't lose any respect for him, if anything, I gained anything, because they pretty much treated him like shit, so there we go, he was telling the truth. And the other thing that I can't remember now, I honestly can't remember now, got on oh, the network, that's it. The network, did, obviously not coming out in the UK, um, everyone thinking it was Sky's problem, when it wasn't Sky's problem, it was actually WWE's problem, and they could have forced it to come in. Anyway, but after all that, before all that, let's talk about Survivor Series, I mean, that's why we're here, aren't we, so let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, got to find me notes here. If I can fucking find them, there they are. I have my notes always handy to me. Right, okay, well, first of all, you can tell me what the uh, the, the kickoff pre shifting was. If I remember rightly, it was uh, uh, basically a new Fandango who's gone down the Italian thing, and a Bad News Barrett was supposed to return. I don't know if there was um, actually a I only like, like tuned into the uh, pre show about halfway in, so uh, I missed <laughs> the Fandango match, uh, and I also missed uh, Bad News Barrett, which. Uh, well, I wasn't upset about it, but I was like, oh, damn, I missed Bad News Barrett, that's a shame. I think they showed, um, I think they showed it on the pay-per-view, what he said. Oh, yeah, they did. And, that, that yeah, did. and I think it was basically his normal thing, saying that the, the era of Bad News Barrett's coming back. So, yeah, I think basically that's what it was. Oh, so Fandango had a match. Who did he face? Yeah, it was uh, Justin Gerby, I believe. That's it, yeah. And now he's got a new theme, which I think, and a new gimmick, and then Rosa Mendes as a dance partner. Yeah. And I think he still basically got the do 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 do. I think it's in a different song. If you listen closely, you can still hear that in the song. So, right. so yeah. So all right, well let's just skip forward through that then. So yeah, um, right. Yeah. What, what do we have? Well, the uh, second match that was on uh, the pre-show, which uh, did. Oh, there's a second match. Yeah, right. yeah which I did catch. Uh, Swagger versus Cesaro. And I was just like, there we go. Cesaro's burial is now complete. <laughs> um, so he lost. Do he won? Oh, uh, he, he lost. <laughs> and like Jack Swagger is really over. Well, not not over over, but he was over that in that match, and it was just like wow. I mean, Cesaro at the beginning of the year was going to be like our savior. He's going to save the WWE. He's such an amazing athlete, and he's. Well, he says that in the interview, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah no, because no, no. I mean, at, that's what I was like. I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he was because like, he's a talented wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. Uh, exactly. He says one thing out of wrong, and he fucks up, and that's exactly actually what CM Punk said in the, in the podcast. He says you can't go out of your character ever at all when it comes to interviews and stuff. He, I think he crossed the touch the line on that, and obviously Cesaro did. And basically, well, he, yeah, anything, fuck. I thought Cesaro was still being in character. You know, he's still being a bit healer. Oh yeah. Who exactly. wants to see the Orton and the Cena? <laughs> I, I, don't, that was, I think that was my... That uh, was more Italian, to be honest. Yeah, yeah that was my uh, racist Italian <laughs> accent. <laughs> Mario! But yeah, so, okay, so we kick off... 
you know, racist Italian aside, um, yeah, okay, we kick off Cyber Series with Vince McMahon comes out, calls out the authority, they talk about blah, 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 you know, if, if you don't lose, you're fired and all that other shit. Now, obviously, the dirt sheet here was basically, I might as well say it, the rumour was, that obviously, that Stephanie McMahon is pregnant again, and obviously, you know, so, I don't know if you heard about this, yeah, Stephanie McMahon's pregnant, and that's the reason, probably why Team Authority lost. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. So, again, I was a little bit pissed off I read that, because... To be fair, it's seen this team, so at the end of the day, seen this team was probably always going to go over, regardless if she's got a bun in the oven or not. Uh, but they've already got three fucking kids at their age, man, so they wish, you know, should like, get a vasectomy, for God's sake. Yeah, <laughs> you like know? I, I got a vasectomy. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> it was fantastic. I've, 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 I've never got anyone pregnant since. Well, to be fair, oh. since then, I've only had protected sex with one woman. <laughs> so... And, if, that, and yeah. if she had got pregnant, then yeah, you'd have to sue somebody. But yeah, so they come out. John Cena comes out, of course. Oh, God. Hello. Oh, I'm here. I'm still here. Oh, no. Sorry, yeah. Oh, yeah. For, uh, for anyone who listens to our things, if you didn't guess already, we uh, use Skype to record. So basically, <laughs> dropouts keep fucking happening. <laughs> yeah. No, I think someone messaged me, so that's why I went... Oh, so, right. Yeah, okay. oh, anyway, oh, so, also, yeah, so... we use Skype, and also, we're very unfucking professional as well. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, I, 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 try, I tried to bury my broadcast partner. Oh, yeah. You do? It sucks. I hate you. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't hate you. Really. But, um, yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah, um, moving on. So, John Cena obviously comes out, says the same thing, and the few this man gives the power. I'm not sure if he gave this before Raw or on the day. So, the only one that could give the authority back in power is John Cena. So, basically... Yeah, yeah he, John, that, that was the first time he said it. it was just yeah, the, so it's just like, you want power back, God damn it! Well, it's John Cena. You know, it's just like, he's going to have to give you power. Yeah, why? Why you give that to John Cena? It's... No, it's it's yeah. like giving a child a nail gun. Like, here's a nail gun for your birthday, you know, and then she shoots you and you wonder why. You know, it's just like, there you go. Same, logic, same logic, really. But, of course, you know, I think they played it off as definitely right. Some people might think, oh, well, technically Triple H got himself disqualified, you know, during that match, but it still didn't count. You know, well, what if someone, what if they thought he'd go behind someone's back, behind Vince's back? So I think they had to make it clear that obviously Vince gives his power to someone who they thought he don't like, which is John Cena. But there we go. That's WWE. It's not always going to give you an erection. So there we go. So he gives it to them. Cena says, you've got no chance in hell, and then just walks out. <clears throat> Yeah. And what's actually funny is that uh, Stephanie kind of breaking down and cry acting on Raw like the next time. Is she like seeing my wife like this? And then they went, yay. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Um, yeah, yeah, so. Well, yeah. Well, you better be careful. We're not oppressing her with the patriarchy and all that. Yep. <laughs> so we move on to the first match, which was the opening tag team match. Gold and Stardust, or I can't remember what you call them. The uh, Dust Brothers. That's probably that's it. Versus the Lost Matadors and obviously the Bull, the Usos, and Miz and Miz Down. Yeah. So, for an opener, not too bad. Actually, a little quite, slow yeah. to start, but I mean, it, it literally got there at, towards the end with everyone doing, like, you know, flips and things, and then they had the ball jump out of the ring and the other one jumped out of the ring. So, yeah, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good opener. They had uh, that other move, what was it? Um, they had, like, wasn't it four or five people on the turnbuckle and ended up doing, like, a backdrop, and then two people went under that, and then the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, about, it was right. I think it was about four people at max. Uh, yeah, so, and that was, like,. That was quite fantastic. Uh, Miz and Miz Dow again doing the same thing. Miz puts his hands up and goes boo, and Sandow puts his hands up and goes yay. Yeah, that, that was, was quite surprising. <laughs> it was, it was, because people wanted to miss Dow. So, normal match, normal back and forward, you know, not typical typical work. Now, the f- thing is, I have a problem with this is, obviously, usually, if you're going to do a fatal four-way tag team match for titles, realistically, it should be four people in the ring, like three or four in the ring and the partners outside and not just two people and then other two teams outside I think that's how they used to do it I, I, the, the gripe I thought you were going to mention then uh, that fact that it was one fall to a finish you know and it should, I've, I, if anything I think that works quite well you know because you know, it's just two people in, and, they, and you could tag anyone in. That, that works brilliantly. You know, when like, you know, somebody just tags themselves in, like, ah, fuck you, <laughs> and, you know, get out. Uh, I'm going in now. It was definitely, it definitely works with like uh, Miz, you know, uh, you know, rallying the crowd up. It's like, you want Miz now in? The tags Miz now in. Yeah. Miz now gets in, and then like Miz just tags himself back in there straight away. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not getting this. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I'm not saying that two team philosophy doesn't work. I'm saying I think back in the olden days, if it done a, if it was a four way tag team match, usually it was still a four way in the ring, you know. But I suppose it does have. You know, I'm not saying that the two ideas shit like you just said. Like, it is a good idea. I'm just saying that's what I used to think it was. So. 
Uh, anyway, so um, they hit days. the boot. What are you talking about? Bruno Sammartino days. I can't even remember. I don't think I've ever seen a, four, a fatal four-way tag match where four <coughs> people have been in the ring at the same time. Really? I think I have. Uh, sure. uh, might, might, well, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's me. Well, then again, you did reveal to me you were a WCW kid. You probably saw it on WCW, <laughs> you know. Hey, I was a WCW and a WWF man. I had to I had to change back and forth. You know, I was watching I was watching WWF back in 1998, and I was watching WCW. We had to get we just got cable, whatever. We were watching WCW and WWF. It was hard. It was it was fucking hard to choose, man. And I couldn't afford two TVs back then. You know, it was fucking sucked. You know, there we go. Um, uh, so yeah, so the Usos. Uh, yeah, Uso gets in a splash. Obviously, the finisher was Uso hits a splash. The Miz Miz tags himself in just as he hits the splash. Yeah. I think um, yes, Miz Dow basically tags himself in and then basically jumps on the pin. And then we have new tag team champion and fucking I went ecstatic because yeah. I thought this was good. I enjoyed it. I think Miz and Miz Dow team and obviously it's it's Miz holds both the belts on Raw. Uh, I think Raw came out. He came out with two belts and Miz Dow came out with two fucking kids toys belts, which I think is a bit silly. But then again, he's supposed to be his stunt double, not his tag team partner. I guess so that's how they're seeing it. But but I'm not pissed off about this. I mean the Gus, the Dust Brothers, uh, take a line from you. They are a good team. And as I said before we started this, it's not always good to have too much of something good. They were good. Cha- they were good tag team champions. They obviously having them do a long reign wasn't good enough. So you know, keep it short and simple. Move it on. Move it to a new team. You know, move it on. The Dust Brothers will probably get it back at some point anyway. So it wasn't too long, but it wasn't too short. That's what she said. You know. So there we go. Um, I also don't know how long Goldust is actually planning on staying in WWE for. That's good point. He's like what forty five now. But ironically, now he's forty five. He's like the best ring shape he's ever been in. Yeah, exactly. It took him forty five years of age before he, before he could reach the best ring shape of his life you know before, even back when he was actually with um, oh fucking hell when he was with uh, Gang Girls and Mrs. Luna or whatever when he was with her and some other stuff you know even yeah, then he was that what, great what was that like 98 to 99 something like that <clears throat> oh probably something like that yeah because yeah, cause, yeah, but yeah exactly so I don't know when he's going to be jumping ship or basically hang out the boots. I don't know. We've had a lot of good golden dardas anyway. So if you turn around tomorrow or no, on this Monday's Raw and said I'm retiring, I'll, I'll be okay with that. But I'm, I'm hoping Cody would carry on the Stardust character, you know, on his own. I don't know if he could really do that solo. I don't think he really can. But oh, Goldust yeah. retires, then the cosmic key is broken. Yeah. Oh, well, I suppose they've already got well, no, the, whatever the hell the character's motivation is supposed to be. I don't fucking know. But either yeah, way, either way, it's, they're entertaining. Yeah, that's the, yeah they are. They're very the entertaining. Point. and a very good team. And if anything, Cody again, great wrestler. He works. Does a star. Does character brilliantly. You know. True, so true. there we go. But yeah, me and Michelle might go there same two for next year for Halloween. You know. But I doubt it. <laughs> Uh, uh, so obviously when they won the titles again Miz puts them out everyone goes boo Santa puts them up and he goes yay boo yay boo yay and it was actually quite funny to watch that so right moving on we move on um there were promos backstage interviews and stuff um there was uh Triple H did a pep talk to uh to his team and I think John Cena did one to his team as well yeah uh, the John Cena one was pretty cool not because of Cena or any of that shite uh, but what was uh, basically Eric Rowan was in the background and he was just you know still doing the Rubik's Cube yeah yeah just you know, you know everyone's doing like the back and forth like oh we should win tonight guys and like but we don't we're out of a job or whatever the fuck they said I literally was not paying much attention you know but you know my focus was purely on Eric Rowan just filling around with that Rubik's Cube it was funny yeah, as cute. fuck <laughs> and then like at the end he stands up you know after you know, everyone's given the speech and whatnot. John Cena's given his big speech, and then Eric Rowan just stands up. Everyone's like, "What the fuck?" And then takes the mask off, and he goes, you know, instead of his usual run, like uh, catchphrase, he goes, "Win, win." <laughs> and yeah. I was like, "Yeah, I was just." Very great. Was Must have taken days to learn that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was good. Yeah, I mean they done it. I was even surprised to even see was it, they were even going to put they were even going to put Ed Rowan on this team, like, turn him a face. You know, it was very weird to see. I mean, I hate hate seeing the Wyatts face off against each other, but you know, I suppose the Shield do it now when they're doing it more brilliantly than when they were a team. So you know, I suppose there we go. Well, things of the Wyatts though, like I could see them eat. Easily just you know like reforming down the line you know with with the shield maybe with the shield yeah, I mean they were the doing... shield is completely dead but 
Yeah, I mean, Wyatt's, on the live UK shows, they were still doing tag team matches, Luke and Harper, anyway, even though they were technically broken up, they were still doing tag team matches. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, you, you're right, they do have that ability to reform, as a Shield, now they've got no chance. But yeah, they're Shield, yeah. good team, good opponents. Well, what I meant White... by the characters, it's just like, they've had a few fights to, you know, against each other, but they'd be like, alright, you know, we're brothers again. You know, yeah. that, that, that's, that's, that's the way I feel the characters would be. They'd be so like, it's kind of you like know, a hey, no, you're gone. Yeah, they could have like a, you know, not like a big feud, but you know, they could face each other off in matches and shit like that, and then just be like, "Oh, great, well, let's get back together, guy." Yeah, cool. <laughs> you know, they're just like, they're yeah, just, exactly. Yeah. Basically, it's like Kane and Undertaker relationship. You know, they one minute they were enemies, one minute they were a team, then they were enemies, then they were a team. You know, so it could be that sort of philosophy. Okay. And Bray White still doing what he does best, you know, and he's not bothering going anywhere near them. Um, I didn't assume Bray White was going to be on the team if he wasn't feeding with Dean Ambrose, and he might have maybe made the uh, Triple H team. But uh, yeah. but yeah, yeah, there you go. So uh, moving on, we move on to traditional our uh, first traditional Survivor Series now. Back in the day, they used to have fucking, I think, two to three traditional Survivor Series tag team matches. They had a minimum of two. A two, um, two ta- probably two men one and one woman one. But of course, this WWE nowadays, you know, let's just see this good stuff. See this good, lovely, good stuff. WWE. We're going to put it in a bag. We're going to choke it. and We're going to throw it over a bridge. And when you're, hopefully, when yeah. you're never going to see it again. Well, hence you know? why I said the, the other fatal four-way tag match should have been an elimination. That way, it goes into the yeah. female Survivor Series as well. You know? I know, but... We'll know that like now with Triple H and Vince are a little bit more arses, I suppose, backstage, you know, especially Vince and Man, but due to, uh, due to, due to, um, due to, uh, excuse me, due to punk, so, hmm. Yeah. Mm, hang on, I'm just finishing a sausage roll. <laughs> okay, right, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that's no. not a euphemism. I actually am eating that. <laughs> so move on to. Oh, yeah, she did. <laughs> so, we had, well, I don't know if it was called Team Page versus Team Natania, but some people were saying that, and it was posted. That was on Wikipedia as well. So uh, well, I uh, I'll just have the Wikipedia up. Whether it's a fat, you know, this is legit information or it's just somebody just put their own opinion. Uh, apparently, it's Team Fox versus Team Page. Really, Team Fox? Oh, someone said it was Team Natania. Oh God, someone's been fucking I Wikipedia did, I, again. I did. <laughs> I did. All the women were interchangeable, basically. I don't mean, I don't mean that nasty. I just mean like. It's like half. Yeah. It's like each team was peppered with face and heels. You know? Yeah, I know. It so was, was weird. Like, it shouldn't I, really have been point? Team Fox anyway, because Team. I mean, I would have thought Natalia was more face than Miss Fox anyway. You know, considering you know, I, I want I want Lisa Fox to go back to going crazy after matches again. That was that was fun to watch. Well, no, wish... that, that's Paige's thing now. You know, I know, but still, you, man, leave, Paige, Fox, you, you leave Paige alone. Ah, oh, I won't like Alicia Fox is cool too, but yeah. Oh yeah, she's Paige. not my address, so. But um, so, I'm one yeah, of those so... creepy fanboys. You are. I'll yeah. buy. I'll 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 go into the gym where she works and sniff her seat. <laughs> Yeah, that's, well, that's not really. Thing. I, I think my fiance would be really pissed off if that happens, but still, <laughs> she doesn't need to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I just goes to show she doesn't listen to my podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. So, if you listen to this one for once, good for you. But if you're not, don't worry about it. Right, so anyway, right. This match was mediocre at best. Yeah. Um, my missus thought it was a little bit better than my wife did. I don't know what I didn't like about it is basically how Paige was the only member. Of, you know, she didn't limit any of the team. Team Fox basically. Brutalized, obviously, team Paige, she was the last one. It sucks because Paige, again, one of the only many talented wrestlers on that team, and she basically has to job to basically probably three less talented people, you know. But then when you've got someone like Cameron and that on your team, it's just like, no, just just, just hang hang up the contract and just leave. Go to TNA, seriously, you know. I mean, yeah. I can't really remember who was on all the teams, to be honest. It'd be Paige, it was Paige, Cameron, oh my god, I can't Paige, remember. Paige, Cameron, uh, Layla, and Summer Rae. Layla and Summer Rae, yeah. and then Apparently it was the, Natalia. The, the team is called the Slayers, you know, Layla and Summer Rae. I didn't know that till today. Huh. No, I was just not telling you as well. Yeah, again, Layla and Summer Rae are good, are kind of talented. I just got to against Cameron. I don't know what it is. And her song, it's just, just such a bit. After this, go on YouTube and put Cameron's theme song by Girl and listen to it. It's probably the most thing you ever don't want to hear again. You know, it's, it's awful. The song is fucking awful. Did you just eat an apple? No, no, no. So like, yeah, an apple, never mind. So, um, then there was, so basically, the match was, uh, I thought it was going to have very early animations, but the match actually went on for, a good, I'd say, a good, what, 10 minutes? Maybe 15, 10? Yeah. 15 minutes, 15 minutes. I well, mean, I suppose it has to be. 14, for 14 odd, I was just rounding up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's still good for a decent match, because I thought it was going to be, I thought it was just going to be basically 
literally like what Mark Henry, big children to Mark Henry at the start of their match, but it wasn't. It was no early eliminations. Uh, I haven't written down who eliminated who first, but all I know is that Paige was the last to be eliminated, and no one on her team, Natalia's team, got eliminated. Uh, so yeah, I think Emma. Yeah, Emma was on the other team as well. Uh, Paige ended up saying screw this at some point, but Emma obviously threw her back in. Uh, ended with Naomi doing the rear view, and then obviously that kind of that leg scissors thing she does, which is actually really quite good into the floor, and that's it. And then after the match, obviously Tyson Kidd was like, yeah, I won, I won, even though, and even though his wife won. He's just yeah. like, yeah, fuck my wife, yeah, I've got it's the strokes on my iPod, yeah, you know, whatever. It's, a strange, even, it's strange how a gimmick from Total Divas is actually, you know, still going on after this looks, time, and it's actually kind of working in a way. It looks weird, it's also it's got that pink white hood hood up as well, yeah. I don't think they should really, you know, I'm not going to really step on that, but yeah, I'm all going to say it looks weird with a big white pointed hood, and I think True. WWE should really change that. So, anyway, moving on, I'll we'll let you move on to this one. Oh yes, because it's my boy, Bray Wyatt, back, my too. A- back after, well, fuck you, <laughs> he's my boy, fuck you. You can, well, you, fine. you can have Dean Ambrose, okay? Yeah, I don't mind that. The, the, it, yeah. the WWE don't want him anymore, so you have Dean Ambrose. Yeah, exactly. Well, okay. actually, that's, that's a bit harsh. I'm just saying. Yeah, it really was, is. Last <laughs> last pay per view, he was main eventing, and now he's uh, mid card. Yeah, but a good good yeah. mid card nonetheless. Uh, yeah, so it's Bray Wyatt versus Dean Ambrose. In case you didn't uh, gather that from our ramblings. Uh, yeah, it was um, a straight up uh, brawl match basically. There's a couple of moves in, but I, like my notes here, I literally probably counted about two suplexes. The rest of it yeah, was just literally straight up brawl, which but, was, but which it's, wasn't bad, you know. Because no, no, that was good. That's what it should have been because yeah. there's no way after what they've done to each other, this had to be a brawl, really. And like Dean yeah. Ambrose wanted revenge, you know, for teasing. Like Teddy wasn't there, was he, Dean? You know, and all that shit. Yeah, he was yeah. saying to him, you know. Yeah, that whole, like, the whole storyline. It was like at first he just did nothing with it, and then all of a sudden, Bray Wyatt drops like, "Hey, do you know your daddy's still in prison, Dean?" And it's like, <laughs> it's. Uh, it's like, well, at first I thought, eh, but I thought, fuck, at least it actually gives the storyline some motivation, you know, rather than just like, I mean, yeah, I love Bray Wyatt and I love his promos. Problem is, can you remember anything about his promos? I mean, can you literally say, remember anything he says in them? Because a lot of them seem yeah. to be unfocused. A lot of them are just cryptic, aren't they? Yeah, really? yeah. No, but, like, and that's the are delivered amazingly. It's just very cryptic, though, especially these last few with Jericho, which just. I, yeah, there was literally nothing to it. It's like what just about. I so think most least, of his me- at least no, they're on. having a point to it. So you're with like, hey, your daddy, uh, and him trying to save Dean Ambrose, like he tried yeah, to do. Yeah, as normal uh, people daddy probably Brian. say, yeah, daddy left you. He doesn't love you. Probably why it has to take it into stretches it into a twenty minute promo of daddy wasn't there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so. but I mean at least there's some motivation behind it, which makes his uh, promos at least a bit more focused and no, I think, yeah, and I actually think gives Bray a reason to him a, a small yeah. reason for Dean Ambrose to attack him back as well as a reason to give Bray Wyatt to go after Dean Ambrose as well you know which is uh, but anyway that's enough of my uh, fucking you know Hoss licking. My. <laughs> that's licking, I was just going to say my, uh, sh- my shitty analysis. You know. No, no, it's not. No, it's not a shitty analysis, man. It's actually quite a good analysis. I would admit, no, you've, you've worded that pretty well. Yeah, I mean, Bray Wyatt does do a great job. The promos are very well done. There are only a few people out there that can go a really good promo. And then one of those is Chris Jericho. One of those is Adam Copeland Edge. And I'll say the next one is Bray Wyatt. And even Dean Ambrose, he could do a good promo as well when he was throwing out all the merchandise, you know. You, the left, out, you left out Mick Foley. How dare you? Mick Foley? Ah, oh, what's that? Actually finished. Oh yeah, and Mick Foley. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, he's one thing he doesn't really come to mind. He does do good promos, but I don't know. I think I would put. But yeah, you are right. When I, when I ever just... think like greatest promos of all time, I'd say my top three without a doubt is the Kane Dewey promo from ECW. <laughs> you ever said that? Uh, probably, probably. I, well, I don't exactly. Remember. Oh, I'll, I'll totally have to give you the video after we finish this cast. It is fucking possibly. It's basically. Wait, say it again. What is it again? Say it again. It's a uh, Kane. Well, the name of the promo is called Kane Dewey, which is basically. Uh, it's got Jack going on about a sign he saw in the ECW arena that said Kane Dewey, and he's like, "Dewey Foley is a three-year-old boy. You six sons of bitches!" And then goes on <laughs> this big tirade. You could definitely see where. Bray Wyatt's well, sorry, uh, Wyndham Rotund. No, I just call him Bray Wyatt because his real name is just bloody weird. <laughs> uh, it is, isn't it? It's like yeah. Wyndham Rotund. Yeah, Wyndham like, Rotund. Yeah. 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 yeah, I can see where that's where Bray Wyatt definitely got some influence for for his kind of like. No, I think it's his new Bo. Bo Wyndham Rotund. I'm sure it's like that. 
I don't know. Yeah, so it, 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 it's Wyndham Road Tunnel, motherfucker. I know because Wikipedia told me so. Oh yeah, well, good. Yeah, and that's Wikipedia, great to know. And Wikipedia is always <laughs> correct about everything. You know, so. Yeah, so. Right, <laughs> time. Go on. What oh, were you saying? Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah. Um, problem is, like I said, in my notes here, I can't really say too much about any big moves or spots because there was no. Well, there's literally a few moves because it was just a straight up brawl, which was which really worked for both the wrestlers because. They're not overly technical wrestlers. They can do some pretty. No, I mean no. They can do some pretty, co- pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Less, but exactly. I mean, we're not watching Kurt Angle. I don't want to say this on Chris Benoit, you know, or Daniel Bryan, you know, like we're not, you know, they're technical people. You know, this was this was a brawl. Both good wrestlers, yeah. amazing wrestlers. The storyline was up. This was going to be a brawl. There was going to be no um, armbar, you know, hundred move, one hundred knee armbar. You know, it wasn't going to be no armbars. There was going to be no headlocks. There was going to be nothing. It was going to be straight out, you know. Yeah. I'm going to kick your ass because you, you know, you know, yeah. because you insulted my family. You know? And it was, it was a good match. It was good. Uh, Ailey obviously DQ. Yeah, um, I, I, I knew there was going to be a screwy finish, nonetheless. Yeah, but I mean, it, it was had the, to be. It was the same thing that uh, Bray Wyatt tried to do to Cena at WrestleMania. Yeah, like tried to get the yeah. the beast to come out, uh, and were basically that really awesome, like. Story development is was wasted on Cena because fuck Cena, he's a shithead. I don't, yeah, uh, okay, I'm on about Cena the character, all right? You know, everyone's gonna go not to me. You see the person, the lovely, it's not, I don't give a shit. But uh, what I mean is like probably is though. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's like trying to get Cena to hit him with a chair, and like Cena's like. But think uh, about all those make you wish. Let's go overcome yeah. those odds. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, think about all those make a wish people who go trying to see. You know, I mean, you must go and go to hundreds of them. You know, in two in a month. You know, what I mean, if he was that much of an ass, he wouldn't go to them. You know, so you got respect for that. Oh well, yeah, but uh, okay. Um, this is only his word. Uh, I'm taking. I don't. Uh, you may believe it or not, but apparently CM mm-hmm. Punk did. Just as many wish make wish foundation things. Yeah, it's he said just, it is, uh, yeah. Nope, he said that. Um, yeah, um, that loads of people did make a wish, but they only show the golden boy, the poster child. I've seen it doing it, you know. So yeah. yeah. So, but, so, um, uh, but where, where were we at? Oh yeah, sorry. The uh, so yeah, but that same thing with the uh, WrestleMania scene, you know, trying to get Cena striking mature. It worked yeah. well with Dean Ambrose. You know, cause Dean Ambrose was like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> exactly. And then like, you know, I thought. Uh, I, I, like a normal DQ, it didn't do anything too screwy, like, you know, doing the Bray Wyatt, like, you know, zap, with the lights going out and shit. So, at least I was happy Duh. about that. Oh, yeah, well, no, the, it's, the, not, it's not that anymore, is oh, it? Oh, yeah, it's they changed it to... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they also had that thing on SmackDown where he disappeared and ended up behind Dean Ambrose as well. Oh, that was awesome, yeah. That was good. That was pretty good for something on SmackDown, to happen on SmackDown. You know, you've got to give credibility to that, you know. I'm like, most people, I watch SmackDown, I watch it every week, well, but... Sometimes I record it and watch it the next day, but I do watch it most Fridays. Sometimes it's not <laughs> 11 o'clock, man. I, 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 never, I never watch SmackDown, because fuck you. <laughs> well, you should, because it's not all bad, what people... People say it's the most biggest, like... People say, my dog is a nice fresh one on the carpet. That is like watching SmackDown. It's not all, not always, okay? I'm not going to lie and, you know, I'm not going to lie and sit back and go Pinocchio and say, yeah, SmackDown's better than War. Yeah, I'm going to toss over SmackDown. No. Yeah, there are elements of bad stuff to it. I would admit, I would admit that, of course there are. You know, there are a lot of things they could be making, but it's like it said... In the Paul Heyman DVD or the Paul Heyman Blu-ray, whatever one you've got, uh, he said in there that SmackDown will always be a B show, and he's right. It, it will never. He tried to make it better than Raw, but then Stephanie McMahon stopped him. It will always be the B show. It will always literally be B for bullshit, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, true, true. I mean, I've read uh, in a dirt sheet. Apparently, they're gonna try because the moving, the mo- yeah, they're moving SmackDown oh. back to Thursday, back like back when, oh, we, like, back when we were kids, like you know? months ago. Yeah, it was going back yeah. to Thursday. But, yeah, but, but, yeah, but, Originally, yeah, it was like a, a billboard or something that uh, one of the production trucks had it printed, saying, you know, Thursday is like, oh shit, you know, you got leaked. And then all of a sudden they changed that production truck back to Friday for some reason. But then about three months later they go, like, oh, actually, yeah, we are moving to Thursdays, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, but apparently because of the move, they're going to try and make uh, SmackDown a stronger show like they used to back in the day. Cause, oh, you know, well, fucking bollock. Well, who, who wrote that? Pinocchio? <laughs> you know, it's Dan who's saying, or maybe not Dan. Oh, you said, it, dude, it's a uh, dirt sheet, so who fucking knows? But, um, I don't, I don't think they're gonna. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. why the because apparently that was why the uh, you know the stipulation of uh, John, <coughs> was it John Cena's team get, team get if they lose, if they, they lose, get fired. Get fired. 
yeah. Oh yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was said on the SmackDown, wasn't it? And uh, that's what they want. That's yeah, well, they yeah. I think that's probably also why most of the Dean Ambrose Bray Wyatt feud has pretty much purely taken place on SmackDown. Yeah, probably because there's no space for it on Raw, but that's pretty much. No, the so, space yeah. is based on Raw. They just fucking fill it with shite. Uh, but um, but yeah, so. They may be building it up to like back when we were kids, because when we were kids, you know, like SmackDown was a, a genuine second show or whatnot. Yeah, you know, it was just like a storyline happens on Monday, it continues on Thursday yeah. and goes on like that. But yeah. not now. Now it's like can't, half of a storyline possibly <sighs> potentially happens on Raw, and SmackDown will basically recap it 58 times and then just do the same matches as Raw. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, if it goes back to the old ways, and hell, that's good. Well, it'll be good, because, yeah, I mean, my, like I said, I mean, what with my uh, my daughter coming in, like, within next year, when she gets older, I hate to think that she'll see it the same way as SmackDown is part of the shit show. I don't want her to see it that way, you know? I want it to be like it was when we were, like, when we get the grey notes around, when we, you know, when we were kids, you know? So, yeah. but I don't, it will never go, like, what shot? It will never go back that way. But, I mean, you just, again, you just analyse it up quite well. But here's you know? a serious question, though, about your daughter, right? How old are you gonna leave it before you tell her about Kfab? <laughs> you know, how how long gonna leave it before I tell her that it's not real? Yeah. Essentially. Um well if I'm gonna be honest, let's I, just I let's, didn't know when I was, just, yeah, just, I was about twelve or thirteen. Let's, yeah. yeah, let's have a bit of honesty in this in this today's card. Yeah, I didn't know until later on. I it was it was much like yeah, but I was about the same, yeah. I didn't find out until like long ago. I used to remember I was in school and I was defending uh, wrestling and everyone's going, oh, it's fake. And then he goes, like, oh, yeah, well, what's this match? Yeah, how is, that, how is that chair shot fake? How is that weapons fake? You know, I didn't yeah. find out until later. And then I saw Beyond the Mat and that yeah. obviously made me started realising, okay, maybe this is a bit scripted, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, we saw, I saw, when I first saw Beyond the Mat, it was on fucking Sky and I was like eight years old, it like, aired or whatever. So, I mean, we, it was very young and I remember them saying, it was like, like, the, dark, like the, the magician who reveals the tricks, like that that was on, the masked magician reveals the tricks. Like that, I used to watch that when I was younger. Oh, and I that, fucking yeah. hated that. I hated that because I used to love magic. I had my own little Paul Daniels kit and there's fucking some cunt in a mask just goes and reveals. I'm sorry, I hate that guy. I hated that show. I don't know why I watched it. I don't know why my granddad sat me down and said watch this show fuck you granddad uh, <laughs> you should not have maybe watched that show yeah but anyway i didn't did I sat, sorry after you no i i defended it and like and then when we, we i watched beyond that when i was younger with my brother and then obviously we're fans of wwf and he's and i remember him turning around to me saying oh no no this is not the moves they do they don't do this in wwf it's completely like different and yeah. you know so because me and my brother was quite close when we were young especially when it came to wwf because we used to do it on the bed we went through like a few beds we Ooh. broke it Ooh. for doing it you know Ooh, <laughs> so, yeah. i know it sounds wrong i know but yeah but i didn't find <laughs> out until later on and to be honest, I was a little bit shocked, but at the same time, you know, I remember there was this one time I remember when it was JR and Taz when they were doing a feud. Um, I don't know if you remember that one or not. That was actually, and Taz that was was actually just when I started watching it. Yeah, and uh, he, uh, I thought oh, it was King, and he goes, "Hey, Joe, watch this," and he ends up smashing a window when Joe was inside, and he ends up bashing all the glass and stuff like into his eye and stuff. Yeah. And I remember turning around and saying to my mum, "Oh, well, can't you get arrested for that? You know, can't you get arrested?" And now I know why she didn't fucking answer. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, so it was kind of a bit shocking, but at the end of the day, I don't love it any less just because. Oh my god, just because you know, just because it's scripted, but it's not fake. I hate when people use that word. I re that really, you know, what really grinds my gear. Yes, you know, when people say wrestling's fake, it's not. It's scripted. They can get hurt. If they can't get hurt, really, why is Stone Cold Steve Austin still not fucking wrestling? You know, exactly. So there you go. You know, why is Adam, why is Edge still not wrestling? You know, there we go. Because accidents fucking happen, people. You know, that's what happens. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not expecting a lot of, like, haters to be listening to this, but I just hate when people use that word. Don't use the F word, you know. The fuck, you know. Use the yes word. Um, I'll... And in answer to your question, I'll probably tell her, I don't know, I honestly don't know, I haven't really thought about that, you know. <laughs> I mean, make sure you about. tell her straight away the second she can understand logic, you know, make yeah. sure you tell her that, like, oh, Santa like Claus, free. Easter egg, uh, Easter, sorry, Easter bunny, all that shit's fake, but, you know, well, don't, but don't break to, the kayfabe, though, do not break the to, kayfabe to her. No, him. obviously just, not, just no. Just, yeah. No, to be honest, I, that's what I said. I said, whenever, and this might sound horrible, and we're going off topic here, but I always said to myself, when I had children, I was never going to tell, make a believe in Santa Claus and all that shit, because I just think it's bollocks that you should lie to children about that stuff. And now a lot of people are going to disagree with me about this. So, you know, oh, it's fun for kids, it's fun. Well, it's fun to lie, it's fun for them to find out that, you know, some kids get really worshipping Santa Claus, some people start loving it, and 
oh, I'm sorry, it's just me. We sneak into your parents at night. You know, your, uh, so we sneak into your room at night, and we, we put all the gifts there, you know? So yeah, especially it's just, in the modern day, you know, with, uh, like... More, more, more parents saying to their kids like, probably done by iPads it's, and stuff. It's just like, hey, you know, if you, you know, if anyone sneaks into the house or whatever, or if you see any strangers, fucking run like crazy. But we'll still, hey, but don't worry about Santa though. He just comes into your room at night, you know, and tea bags you. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. don't worry about you him. You put, you put some milk and cookies out for you, and you know, they're fucking gone when you get up. It's like, what the motherfucker stole my cookies? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you imagine a child being scared of Santa Claus, I'll be like. I'm scared. He's gonna come in my room and he's like, "Don't worry, Santa Claus isn't real. You have to worry about your uncle Terry." You know, <laughs> yeah, because uh, it's that beard that gives it away. Yeah, because <laughs> you know he will he will put your penis. Well, he'll put his penis inside you. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologise for anyone who had Uncle Terry who blessed them. You know, it, my, my intention was not to offend. Anyway, let's get back to this. Uh, yeah, let's move back <laughs> to the wrestling. Yeah, go on, <laughs> way off track. So the, the breaking of kayfabe, but yeah, the, but there we yeah. go. So yeah, so uh, yeah, so <laughs> Dean Ambrose lost by disqualification. Yeah, um, <laughs> obviously, that, yeah. He, yeah, he said hit me. So Dean Ambrose he, at the front said no. He ends up hitting Dean uh, Bray White, gets swiped for the chair, and of course he doesn't stop there. He gets in the bunch of chairs. He gets a table. I think he gets a table, out, doesn't he? He puts Bray yeah. White through the table. Puts oh. chairs on him, fills it with thingy, and as soon as I said, I said straight to the missus, I said, this is going to be setting up a match, a TLC, for them to be in a TLC match. Yeah. And then they got an out. Ladder. Yep. Yeah, and they announced the Raw, uh, I think part of some sort of battery segment, that they're now going to have a match at TLC, in a TLC match. So that is going to be fantastic. I can't wait for that. Can't wait to see what two talented people, what they're going to write down, what sort of spots they're going to be doing with this. Unfortunately, you know, no one's, everyone's going to get over TLC matches. Oh, it's not, it's not an Edge and Christian match. It's not the Harley Boys in there anymore. You know, it's not going to be a good, you know. Okay, yes, I know WWF have toned things down now, but we still wear some good TLC match regardless. Yeah, you know. I mean, the Dean Amos is pretty good in the, um, the Money in the Bank earlier this year and shit. And how, even how in the cell between Dean and Seth gave me a fucking hard on. <laughs> you know, I mean, that yeah, match is. You should probably see a doctor about that, fella. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Still up now. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm kidding. So, yeah, so they obviously went at it. Um, I kind of that ended in DQ anyway because it would have been hard which one to put over whether Bray Wyatt or Dean Ambrose it's kind of a hard decision because uh, they're both good and none of them realistically should lose so it's a good way to put both of them over so yeah so again good match Dean does again this flying standing elbow drop as well uh, yeah but what's, what I found weird about this match is uh, Bray Wyatt basically picks up Dean Ambrose and slams him on the stairs on the outside and the ref didn't call it a disqualification and if you listen closely when you go back you can actually hear one of the audience members shout out oh that should have been a DQ or something well it should have been shouldn't yeah. it really um, um, I'm not sure does it count if you hit them with a weapon yeah but if they just happen to like land on something that's the does that count I, I can't really remember the disqualification ever happening that way properly yeah, I suppose that's true. I suppose it's always been the logic if you pick a weapon up and hit him with it physically, that yeah. counts, or someone gets involved with accounts. But I suppose, yeah, but surely if you got a chair, put it in the ring, and then did a suplex on it, because, surely, because you can smack your opponent's in, uh, head into the ring post, and that's not a DQ, so. Yeah, you know, I mean, you could take the turnbuckle pad off, and that's not a DQ either, so. Well, you know, I think, well, it used to be back in the day. Probably... Used to be, yeah. Uh, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure if someone got a chair in the ring and then did a move. Oh, yeah, he also did dirty deeds onto the chair as well to break white as well. He also, he also did that, and um, I think he did that to. Um, didn't he do, I think he did that to Luke, Har- Luke Harper on um, Raw as well. He did that to, on yeah. Raw. So. And then obviously, uh, I'll smack down the Raw afterwards, after the pay per view. Bray White got his revenge and ended up covering Dean Ambrose in chairs on the commentary table. Uh, one thing I didn't want to talk about Raw, uh, one thing at the, the ending, I thought, I want to know if that was real or not at the end of Raw. But anyway, we'll go through that. So yeah, moving on. So yeah, good match with Dean. Good. What? Sorry, what I, you- I just coughed. <laughs> I know, you, you've hit some words there. No, it, it just didn't seem like it was planned to be at the end, but there we go. So anyway, so Dean, um, Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt, good match. I'm sure it's going to be good at TLC. I uh, don't know. What's the one after TLC? Well, Rumble, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, uh, I doubt they're going to... I don't know. That's, uh, since moving, I haven't really stayed up for many pay-per-views live, partly because, you know, we haven't had time or we, I can't be up. Mainly Raw, though. I hate to stay up for Raw money because the adverts. The adverts is just the only thing that drains me. But Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, definitely will be two favorite pay-per-views of the year, then followed by SummerSlam. So, yeah, so we move on. 
Move on for, for once, for good. Uh, we move on to a match that I'd rather piss out kidney stones than fucking have to review this, so you can do this. So we, we okay, saw Adam okay. Rose and the Bunny versus Slater and Gator. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, um, they're yeah. doing this whole thing at the minute where it's just like hey, 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 bunnies. Hey, hey, you said you'd let me review it, all right? I, oh, okay. And I'll I shall review it, kind of and then, we can, then we'll get on to the next match. Adam Rose and the Bunny defeat Slater Gator. Moving on. Moving on, yeah, yeah. okay. No, um, yeah. Nikki Bella uh, versus AJ Lee. No, uh, no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, just, we've uh, moved on. Fuck that Adam uh, Rose not, match. No, yes, just let me just say one thing. I don't mind Adam Rose, but what I don't, I don't know what we're doing at the moment is the whole bunny is more famous than him, and yeah, and yet he's like given the bunny the party foul, and yet the bunny still wants to suck him off and like stuff like that. I don't really like the gimmick that they're doing with this at the moment. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, okay, so moving on. It's obvious they're going for an Adam Rose turn, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. There's no I point mean, talking about that until it happens, if it happens. Yeah, so, I mean, yes. you would have thought he would have gone a bit of face a little bit longer before they turned him heel. And his character's yeah. not really a heel, to be honest. It's more face, but anyway. Anyway, so, before Nick and AJ, we did actually have a promo with Roman Reigns. We did a, there was a live thing with Roman Reigns, oh, yeah. uh, say, saying that, basically, oh, Dubio, that's a stupid question. I hope I was there tonight and punched you Seth Rollins in the face. Ha ha, you know, you know whatever. Um, worst impression of Roman Reigns ever. Uh, I think... I thought it was pretty spot on, wasn't it? <laughs> Really? Okay, there we go. I don't, um, I don't hate Roman Reigns, but I'm just saying. It is a, yeah, he still needs yeah. a lot of work on his promos. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he does. He obviously does. I thought he was not too bad for this one, uh, mainly because something to do with Vince and uh, Triple H. Triple H told him to do one thing and Vince was telling him to do another, so it's just like, yeah, you know, whatever. And I think he said in the promo that he'll be back next month. Did he say next month? I'm pretty sure he said he'll be back next month. Yeah. I'm not sure. So, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, then, as to Daniel Bryan, I don't know. I'm hoping, I'm assuming Royal Rumble return, maybe. Same for maybe Roman Reigns is too. I don't know if that might happen. We'll talk about that after TLC. So, yeah, so move to AJ Bella. No, AJ Bella. Yeah, sorry, not AJ Bella. That was on Raw when she came out, posing as her. Move on to Nikki Bella and AJ Lee for the title. And um, we basically saw the quickest Diva match in history uh, here. Yep. I think um, I have an idea that references something to WrestleMania of this one. I don't know if this is any connection at all towards this, but if you remember WrestleMania, one of the rest, I can't remember what WrestleMania it was. Uh, the uh, one 28, I believe. 28, where basically Daniel Bryan loses to Sheamus in like 30 seconds. And that's yeah. because of this kiss from AJ Lee. That's what I assumed that um, Brie Bella was doing. She was doing exactly the same thing to AJ Lee to get her back for basically costing Daniel Bryan. And it cost her the same title. So obviously, as we know, Brie Bella basically starts out. She ends up snogging, cost kissing AJ Lee, sorry. T- Nikki to always her and then wins the title. Um... Also, there's been a fucking ton of memes, hasn't there? There's been a really a lot of memes of AJ and uh, Nick Brie kissing. That's the main one of uh, Daniel Bryan and seeing Punk's face. It's like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. So, what do you think? Nikki Bella, champion? Good. Will she be a good champ? Yeah or nay? Um, as I said to you before we start this podcast, um, we, you know my hatred of the Bellas. Um, no. I just don't care anymore. I just don't care enough to actually even don't care to hate them. You know, it's just like... You do what you do. I don't give a fuck anymore. I mean, I mean, do you? F- I mean, as you can see, obviously Nikki was supposed to be punishing Brie, and now it seems to be like her, they're now a team together now. Yeah, Brie's which makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Uh, you know? So, oh yeah, you just pulled milkshake on me, but yeah, you won the title. Good for yeah. you, Brie. Yeah, you oh, want yeah, to And yeah, Brie, Brie, we shouldn't Brie be all like, oh hey, Nikki, remember all that fucking nasty shit you said about me, like that you never told anyone, and that. God awful running promo uh, on that raw a few months back. Remember that shit, Nikki? Well, yeah. apparently I've forgiven you for that for reasons and uh, shit. You know what I mean? That's why I, I just don't give a fuck about the Bellas anymore. Mm-hmm. Whatever the fuck they do, fine. I just I'm not gonna bitch about it anymore. Just let it happen. I'm fuck it. I don't care. Okay. Right, okay. I mean, but do you think? Um, no, bit, I, bit, Raven, Raven. no, no, no. I'm not, Raven, I'm not talking about the Raven, 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 AJ. Raven, Raven. Shush, shush, shush. No. Right. Talking about, about AJ. I just need to say, I don't care. Talking about AJ. Don't care. About oh, AJ. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm talking Ooh. about AJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm saying, do Who? you think? Do you think it was right to drop the belt this soon? I mean, you, I mean, she's had it. She's not soon. I she's had it for quite a while, hasn't she? So yeah, there was rumours as well that she was going to be leaving the company. Well, uh, after Punk's uh, podcast, uh, she fifty bollocks. She is about to be going to be. She's about to be buried or fucking fired, one or the other. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, he did say it. I know that. The the, the third sheet said that apparently she wanted out after Survivor Series. A uh, oh. new report said, um, a new yeah, apparently she wanted out because um, a new report said that That's regardless true. of the loss at Survivor yeah. Series, that has nothing to do with her wanting out, and apparently she has no plans to leave. Yeah. PM Punk obviously in the promo seems to think different. Uh, the podcast seems to think different. Um, I don't know. I don't see how they can punish her. I mean, if she wants to go in today, she but can go. You can't and, see how they punish him man you, do you know, remember from the CM Punk podcast he shows how fucking petty Triple H is you know? yeah yeah of course you yeah. Know? and you, what you think AJ Lee is going to fucking be unscathed by you know by CM Punk fucking basically dissing the fuck yeah, out of Triple H two, yeah but two wrongs don't make a right you know what I mean but, they shouldn't yeah, as, punish as, as, this, as this business goes nobody gives a fuck yeah, I it's know just basically, I'm just, you know see yeah, you know, Punk bit, had bitterness every- and fucking oh, jealousy okay. just basically takes uh-huh. over everyone. And, yeah, well, you know. if if WWE do do, do any if, if they do end up like punishing AJ or do give start giving a flag for what CM Punk said in the podcast, I don't know. I mean, they might listen to it. Triple H might sit down the street, so he might be some man. I mean, they probably might listen oh. to it. it. Fucking, it broke the internet literally <laughs> the other day. Yeah, it, I know. Yeah, that's, that's true. That, it really true. It probably was even trending. I didn't check Twitter that day. It probably was trending. You know, so there we go. Um, yeah, but if they do. Managed to be petty towards AJ Lee because of what Punk said in Punk's opinion, you know. Then yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I suppose I'll just have to lose respect for them, you know, because AJ's done nothing anyway. And then if they do do that, AJ be forced to leave anyway, and she will leave anyway, and then we'll hey. lose an actually talented diva. You know, no one... you know who else did nothing to deserve what they got? Zach Ryder. No. Yeah, are you being sarcastic or you no? Being I'm, no, I'd be truthful. You know, I'm sorry, I oh, probably yeah. said in a, in a sarcastic <laughs> tone, but. You know, they, you know, he, he's been what? I wouldn't. What's the word? Not buried. I wouldn't have thought you were a fan of that right, To be honest, I, uh, I never like or dislike him. I think he's, I think he's all right and whatnot. You know, but you know, it's just like, how can he still be employed when he's literally wrestled? Uh, I don't know. It is, it is about quite what, well, about yeah. two matches and about fucking as many years. Yeah, he is, he, he's basically doing the rock right now. He shows up, and when he shows up, he probably just gets crushed and never seen again for like another year, essentially. You know, and the yeah. people like Carly. So, uh, that, but yeah, but that's yeah, what I'm, that's yeah. what I'm saying though. You yeah, know, yeah. He, oh, yeah, he, I understand. Did, yeah. he didn't do anything to deserve that. What happened to him? You know, because uh, when I've read and whatnot, he basically he got over with the crowd, but without the officers' approval, so they were like, "Fuck you!" You know. <laughs> yeah. So, exactly. it, so there you go. Uh, I I hope you know, nothing happens to AJ Lee, but you know. Then again, no, I mean it might. You know, like I said, they're petty. You know, they might, it might happen. They might decide. I mean, well, I don't see what else they can do. They can't make her lose the title. She's already lost the title. The only thing they can really do is make money and maybe make her lose a few matches to Eva Marie. I mean, that'd be pretty bad, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know? like, kind of like, or even worse, you know, make Eva make Eva Marie make AGD tap out or have a two out of three falls match and Eva Marie wins both the matches. Yeah. I mean, they, they can't really do much, sir. To be honest, she's already lost the belt anyway, and apparently that was all that was the original plan, according to reports. So I don't see what they can do. And if they do do it, then she'll end up leaving, and then we'll be one talentless diva down in the company. We enjoy it because of them, you know. So there we go. Right. So moving on from that, we move on to the main event, oh, yeah. and we move on to the main event of the original. Uh, we got to kind of be quick-ish because it's almost hit into an hour. But I suppose we can let it go. Let it go. You know. So we move on to the traditional Survivor Series: Team Cena versus Team Authority. Now I'm not going to bother asking you whose time, who was you, what team was you actually backing, despite the rumours. I don't think you. Um, did you hear about the Stephanie being pregnant at all? Thing? Uh, no, did you I, I have not at all. Uh, so you had literally no idea. Wow, that's quite surprising to be honest. Um, so was, who, who, so who did you side with then? Uh, who did team, you actually team right back. Team right back, clearly. <laughs> so, any reason why you wanted team, team right back or Team Cena, whatever it is? Because I refuse to you know, follow John Cena. Uh, but well, obviously because you know they're the faces and you know the authority. You know, it'll be good to get rid of them. You know because. Yeah, yeah, it's been they've, a while, they've had it's been, what a year and a half so yeah exactly yeah. so good things have to come to an end you know what I mean yeah, yeah. so I suppose I was hoping it would come to an end after Wrestlemania you know like uh, yeah say like you know Triple H it's Triple H uh, my man comes out and is like hey Triple H you've been abusing your power to get yourself into the main event title shots da, 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 fuck you yeah. but, pretty much yeah again, but so. I hope that would happen but instead 
So, so the Royal was here basically if the authority lost, the authority would be out of power for good. It's a man stated this, and again, it could have been the reason that Stephanie was or was not pregnant. I don't know. That was just a report. I'm going to go with yes, that probably is true because they've again got three kids. Um, whatever happened, I don't know. You know, so there we go. Uh, Team Cena was based on Cena, uh, Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, Sheamus. At one point, we got crippled. Um, shit. With uh, stunt casting Eric Rowan in his place. Eric Rowan, yeah. And what, who was the fifth one? Big Shit. Big Shit, that's it. Big yeah, Shit. Big Shit. Big Shit. Yeah, and then that's, that's, where, that's how you got to pronounce it now. Big Shit. Big Shit. It's, it's kind of the way Ryback would pronounce it. Yeah. Oh, Big Shit. Big oh, Shit. Yeah. Big Shit. Big Shit. Um, with Team of 40, it was obviously Seth, um, Seth, Henry, Rusev. Oh my god, can't remember these ones. Luke hey. Harper, uh, my team player. I uh, just did Sean Connery voice there. And. Shit, it was the other one. It was the last one. I said Kane. You said Kane? Did you say Kane? I did. Did he say Kane? Did you hear him that's say Kane? That's, that's gotta, gotta be Kane. That's gotta be Kane. Kane. <laughs> My god, that's gotta be Kane. Even though it wasn't actually, um, JR said that it was Vince. But right, that's gotta be Kane. And it was Kane. Yes, in 1997. Seven. Okay, eight, seven. Seven? I thought it was eight. Seven, yes. Okay. I know my shit, so, yeah. motherfucker. You do. So obviously uh, Eric Rowan joins that team with the Rubik's Cube and Luke Harper joins that team, which is good, good, good to get them both in the main event spot. No, I was I was okay with that. Um, but overall the match was fucking fantastic to watch, by oh, God. Yeah. And what what if anything, I'm so glad that Ziggler was the last one. I'm so glad he finally got that maybe that push that he deserved and people keep you know, he finally got there, a rays of hope that he is de- he is a decent wrestler and Seth Rollins again, you know, um, you know, being the sneaky person as it and him and so far as always have great matches so I'm just going to analyse what went out first who went out in what order oh yeah basically uh, uh, Mark so, yeah, Henry oh, Mark Henry goes out was, first they literally I know man, that, was, was, that, was, that was awesome it was just like you know I figured alright I figured the first very first person to be eliminated would have been I honestly Big thought Big, Big, Show, Big yeah. Show or Eric Rowan because uh, my fa- one of my favourite Survivor Series 2001 uh Actually, no, fuck it, it is my favourite Survivor Series. Uh, 2001, you know, the big WWF vs. Yeah, WCW. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, Big Show, he replaced Vince McMahon in the spot on the team WWF, and it's like, yeah, Big Show, and then, like, he get, he's the first to get eliminated like that. You know, and it's just like, oh, well, that, that was pointless. I just think Big Show doesn't really have any meaning in WWE anymore. I just yeah, think but, the match is higher. But, I mean, I like it. I, ironically, the reverse thing happened this time, it's just like, Big Show eliminated Mark Henry with one punch. Yeah, it's the one punch. And the authority, the authority there just on ringside, just like, oh, God it's fucking it, damn it. <laughs> God yeah, damn exactly. It. Yeah. They start the match. He walked in straight into a fist, and that's it. Mark Henry got in literally four seconds, probably even more than that. I don't know. So yeah, so he's gone. And so next one we had eliminated was a right back. Uh, everyone balls. Uh, Steph sneaks into the ring, ends up curb stomping right back. Uh, he's gone. Yeah, I was, I was surprised that right back being the the first one on the uh, team scene is a get gone. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I really thought it would have thought it Eric Rowan or Big Show, like, like we just said. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I thought, honestly thought Eric Rowan would have got down at least to the final four. But there we go. Uh, Rusev, um, Rusev was next. He put Sigler on the commentary table. He's doing a running splash, but obviously he moves, uh, calls in the count out. So obviously Rusev is the third person to be eliminated. Of course, they were going to do that, um, assuming so technically he's still undefeated, but you know, he got eliminated by the count out. So uh, it coming. But, but even though, like, he's still defeated. Fuck it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's, he's still, dead. yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's yeah, still yeah I, I just love, like, they keep saying, oh, he's never been pinned. And it's like, yeah, but he's lost matches. That's, that's, there's no streak. Yeah, exactly, I'm, I'm yeah. being a really pedantic twat. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, but still, you know what I mean? You have to drive through the door. In fact, yeah, he, lost no, first, you know, he lost his first match on the main roster, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Which was Royal Rumble this year because he came in and got eliminated, so. Yeah, that's, that's true, exactly. So he's lost when he gets. So yeah, so so the, the, streak, the streak never started. Fuck, no, fuck Eric. KBL. <laughs> exactly. Luke, Eric and Luke fight out for the first time. They're going blow to blow. Oh, uh, Eric, yeah. Eric dominates, but Seth comes in with a flying knee, and then obviously Luke hits the spinning close. Like Eric Rowan, Eric Rowan is then eliminated next. Uh, um, that was an amazing fucking spin kick that Eric Rowan did. I was just like, whoa, what the fuck? It really was. And then we see the probably the biggest shocker Obviously, it was obviously Big Show turns on John Cena. Big Show obviously punches John Cena, uh, and then the forty were like, "What the hell?" And I didn't see this coming. What about you? Do you, do you think that was a good twist? Big um, Show. I didn't see it coming all the way. I I, I assumed something was going to go screwy at some point, 
But yeah. uh, I really didn't see. Uh, well, I mean, I should have done really because the fifty-eight million turns the big show's done from face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. One minute he's face, well, it's uh, face, face, uh, face, face, face. I was just like, I was so ambivalent about the moment. It was like. I was like, oh great, Team Authority are going to win now. But I was like, hey, he just punched John Cena in the fucking face, you know? Yeah, I had to. So so it was just like, I, was, so I was happy and sad at the same time. Yeah. Is that <laughs> same here? But I was quite surprised Big Show did that. Uh, I didn't see that coming. I mean, I suppose sort of might, must have done, obviously, with the money million turns that Cena's doing, uh, Big Show's doing, but no. So he ends up punches John Cena. Uh, John Cena gets eliminated, which is, which is weird. The captain actually didn't make it down to, like, the final thingy. So uh, Big Show, I'm going to count as the next person to eliminate. He didn't actually get eliminated. He actually just ended up walking out. Um, yeah. did, a, did a promo next day on Raw, basically just saying, you know, they had my house where the thought he made him cry, like, last year on his knees and stuff. Eric Rowan comes out and basically tells him to fuck off. Um, so we got three people left. So three people are left on Ziggler. Um, yeah, literally, and Ziggler so, at this point has been lying outside the ring for about five minutes. He was just, just se- selling, selling like a motherfucker. So you honestly know exactly. So you honestly know, obviously, that it was going to finish down to obviously him. I think I knew somehow Ziggler was going to get Kane out, and I knew at the, at the most I thought Kane was going, and obviously Harper was going. Yeah. So there we go. So it's down to three people left versus Ziggler. It's obviously looking like the authority have got this now. You know, they're, they're going to win. They're outside going shearing and doing whatnot. You know, so there we go. Uh, but Ziggler comes back, uh, hits the zigzag on Kane. Kane is in the next eliminated. Um, Luke Luke beats down Ziggler. I think was Seth before that. Uh, hits the big boot. Hits a falling power on, but Ziggler still kicks out. Ziggler then rolls up Luke Harper. Luke Harper to be the next person eliminated, and then we're down to Seth and Dolph Ziggler. Um, they have a fantastic match just between them both. Uh, he goes for the curb stomp, hits the zigzag. Of course it doesn't happen because what does Triple H do? He pulls out the referee. Yeah. And then they both start beating Ziggler down. Uh, they start beating, beating him down again. Uh, Ziggler comes back. I, think, I can't remember exactly what happens. Ziggler comes back, hits his again. Enough a referee comes down. But then again, Triple H gets in and takes out that referee as well. So that doesn't happen. After that, I think Triple H ended up hitting the pedigree on Thingy. And before a new referee comes down, or Scott Armstrong, I think, comes down, the man with like, just really weird counts, of course, we then see it. We then see it. And then, obviously, the, yep. all the dirt sheets have been saying this. We then see it's Sting, the icon, the legend, it's whatever you want to call it. It's got to be Sting. It's got to be Sting, the guy from the crow, with the crow makeup, with the white face, the black metal makeup, Sting, the guy who you know, gets his back with the black bat. Sting, Sting makes a return to WWE, well not a return, a debut to WWE for the first time. He comes in, they end up going, um, I and I, Triple H, look at him, he looks at him, Triple H goes, what the fuck are you doing here, man? Uh, he hits a scorpion death drop on Triple H, so he's out of the ring. At that point, probably about four or five referees have probably been down. The old referee gets in, as Sting puts Stolf Ziggler onto Seth, counts the pin, and Team Cena have done it. They yeah. have won. Yeah, so there we go. Um, it's yeah, so awesome match. Absolutely. It really was. Yeah. I and mean, suspense just between Ziggler and Seth at the end with the zigzags and you know Triple H is going nuts and taking out the referees and and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. So hang on two seconds. Yeah, keep walking around. This is an interesting match. In. So yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, fuck my four. Yeah. So it was. It was good. Yeah. It, it was, was it was good it was a good match it was good to see that you know the writing was good the writing was done well in this match it wasn't just yeah. like um, Cena, typical yeah it wasn't like Cena overcomes the odds lol yeah, yeah. that's what I thought it was going to be I, I said when we woke up in the morning it was obviously going to be all the authority versus John Cena uh, I thought Cena was going to eliminate Rusev and stuff but it wasn't it was completely a change and that match was really good it was exciting I think one of my friends say that with his dad his dad doesn't even like wrestling but he ended up enjoying that pay per view that's, that's how well they did it you know what I mean so yeah so that's, that's good so yeah it was good right to see you sting I mean, what are your what are your thoughts on Sting? Uh, I was never a WCW guy. I know, you know, I know the uh, the historical importance and like you know the following Sting has, but uh, I've never been a fan of his just because I've never seen much by him other than like the oh, important yes. the important clips that uh, WWE keeps showing, of course, on the mm. on the network. Uh, the only match I've properly watched of his was uh, that wasn't like a clip of Nitro. I mean. Was the whole big build up to him be returning as the big, uh, you know, the crow sting? It was Starcade '97, and the promos yeah. were amazing. The entrance he had was absolutely amazing. Oh. The match, God, it was shite. 
<laughs> you know, yeah. Like, you know, like Hulk Hogan Sting in '87. It was just like, fucking what? This counts as a wrestling match back then. Well, team means body. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was so, just you know, like at that time, WWF they were losing the fucking Monday Night Wars, but they were putting on. They had, had Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, you know, amazing fucking performance, and then like this a giant year and a half storyline to be building up with the NWO and all that. It's just like. I mean, it wasn't just like Sting couldn't carry Hogan. Sting wasn't that impressive either. You know what I mean? It was just yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, but that's not uh, it made me hate Sting. It's just that from what I've seen, uh, he's all right. Oh, I did see. Um, apparently, they did uh, a, they did uh, Sting versus Hogan two at TNA in like 2011, when both men are in the early to mid, uh, early to late 50s. You know what I mean? And it was just uh, you know, I just downtrodden that that Starcade 97 one, right? That was an okay-ish one, okay, at best. This yeah, one, when yeah. you're doing early to late 50s, oh my god, it was fucking atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that, again... I uh, mean, yeah, let's just be honest, that WCW did do some bad things. I mean, like, uh, there was even, like, uh, a new DVD out saying the top 50 shocking moments of, uh, of, of WCW, you know what I mean? They, they held an NWO pay-per-view at one point and not even they had, all they had the match on the back of a lorry once yeah, yeah no, they, had, they had Big Wheeler a Big Wheeler match they had Buff Bagel's mum come involved in the cage way. like but yeah they yeah, had yeah, NWO uh, Abdullah the Butcher in a fucking electrified show and like you get to yeah. electrocute death, but oh, not really God. I've not seen the DVD I want to see the top 50 shocking moments of WCW and they even had, they even had Robocop come in I oh think at God. one I stage that, I actually had that fucking video tape uh, <laughs> really yeah, yeah. 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 Is I have a Capital Combat or Capital Carnage? I think no, Capital Combat. Yeah, because Capital Carnage was the English WWF pay per view. Um, yeah, Capital Carnage, and it was just like, I mean, luckily my kayfabe had already been broken by this point. Yeah, much, <laughs> much, much, much like my hymen didn't. But um, but yeah, my fucking kayfabe, and it was just like, this is 1990 when they still, you know, they tried to. You know, they kept protected KFA pretty well and whatnot. You know, they, they were trying to make sure people didn't know it was fake. And then throughout yeah. the pay-per-view, they have Sting and Robocop. And they build, <laughs> they build Robocop as Robocop, and it's just like, they're saying, he's real, he's here. It's like, Yeah, what? exactly. The fuck? Like, yeah, what? And then he know. saves mm. Sting from like a, you know, like a, a steel bar cage, apparently steel, you know, because Robocop just bends it, and it's just like, rips it off. It's yeah. like, and it's like, okay, okay, yeah. And then Robocop can't walk any further because his leg fucking plate keep, it keeps falling off. So, like, <laughs> you know, so, so he's basically just got to hold his hand there. You know, so it's just I like, can... while the four Rossmen run off, you know, like, Robocop, you know, it's like, oh, we must run away from the Robocop because we are scared. You know, well, don't worry, guys, I'm just going to stand here and make you scared. Yeah. I can't <laughs> walk any further because this leg plate's falling off me. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> probably I remember I don't know I just, just can't believe that he's uh, that's probably on the DVD of WCW top shocking moments I can guarantee it probably is on there the Robocop incident it was it was very weird to say uh, when you were I don't know if you've seen the, the top 50 oh my god moments of WWE or, the, or WWE technically um, or, OMG or, moments yeah I think I watched yeah OMG OMG and uh, they actually have on there the Tim White suicide promos uh, the referee yeah. the guy and uh, Triple H makes a very comment in on the video saying the Tim White promo they're on here really <laughs> you know because it like it was like really you put really bad suicide promos on there even though it wasn't really an oh my god moment it was more it was one of those moments to make you cringe that they actually did that you know what I mean yeah, it's like, the, the oh my god was more not my not shock like oh my god more like oh my god well, oh my god really yeah. Oh my god, really? Yeah, but then again, um, we did Triple H had sex with Kane's like uh, dead girlfriend or like oh girl, the oh, only dead girlfriend. Yeah, that was um, yeah. So WWE have had their fair share of like fucked up moments. Ain't, well nothing, like a, ain't nothing like a bit of dead strange. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, not that I would agree with that, but what about you? <laughs> exactly. So they have done some fucked up things. So overall, yeah, Sting. I like Sting. I've always been a Sting fan. I think my brother had a Sting mask um, somewhere. Like one, like the Wyatt sheet mask. Uh, I think it's probably back at, um, at, my, at my mother's house. I think it might be, unless I've thrown it out. But uh, if I visit there and I go back there one day, um, hopefully I'll see if I can dig it out and maybe I'll do the next podcast talking in it. But probably not because I'll all the time. So there we go. Oh, if you, yeah, if you like... do that, I'll get my band mask on. I was like, oh yes, I was wondering who would go over first. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that was that was that was pretty good. You should do a whole podcast like that anyway, and that would be interesting to watch. But there we go. <laughs> but yeah, so I like Sting. Sting oh, sorry, something just dropped off. Um, yeah, so yeah, it was cool. Um, I don't know what they're doing now with Sting. Um, he's apparently not supposed to show up to T and to T uh, to TLC. Uh, I'm assuming maybe will we get a WrestleMania Sting versus Triple H? Sting's always saying on promos that he's got one more match left in him. Would you like to see Sting versus Triple H? Do you think that'd be a good match? Um, you know, apparently it was the rumors going around before Survivor Series was like he's but his contract's basically got a few TV tapings and one match at WrestleMania. So I think he's definitely having a match at WrestleMania. It was supposed to be uh, him and Undertaker, apparently. But obviously, that was the rumour for years. But also, the rumour just before was like... I think that's what everyone wanted. To yeah, do but, and then, like, I knew immediately after, like, you know, this thing coming in, like, him and Triple H having a thing, it's just like, it's going to be Sting versus Triple H. It's uh, WrestleMania, isn't it? I don't know. I think, I personally think Sting and Triple H should probably be better than Sting and Undertaker. I don't know why I say that, because I'm a huge Undertaker fan, but I don't know, maybe it'd be just as good. I'm glad Sting and Undertaker isn't happening, to be honest, because everyone for years, said that that was going to happen they wanted that you just put put Sting and Untake into Google and look how many like Photoshop photos that come up there's even one with like, I think Sting with the Joker card like across his eye and it's got Undertaker on the card as well like kind of it's like that uh, way yeah. done so did, that's good photos did Sting have that at one point like with a Joker gimmick during TNA he did yes yeah, he did have a, with the makeup and stuff yeah I wouldn't have said like I don't know Sting's real name I honestly don't know his real name but Steve Bond born that's it yeah um but if i would probably say steve not trying to annoy anyone here but yeah if steve has some really low moments it probably would be the tna times yeah, <laughs> like, uh, when he attacks rob van well, somebody attacks rob van damme like a fan with a sting mask on hits rob van damme with a chair takes the sting mask off to reveal sting yeah exactly. oh my god it's a fa- oh wait no sting it's sting. <laughs> It's the exception, yeah, exactly. Well, oh, he's got another one. On. I never actually seen the moment. I just seen the gif of it, and I was just—it's just an amazing thing to watch over and over again. It really is. <laughs> and that, no, that one's gonna do, obviously, because that's um, that's a, that's T nine. So yeah, so yeah, good match, good final match. Overall, I'd give it an eight out of ten. What would you give it? Well, the overall pay per view, uh, yeah, I'd have to agree with that. An eight out of ten, easily. Yeah, yep, eight out of ten. Yep, I mean. I felt a lot of the other matches, other than the main event, were quite weak. Uh, obviously, like the Adam Rose thing, there was no Intercontinental title uh, match, no United States title. And I don't know that obviously they win the match. Uh, Tag Team title match was good. The change, the Divas match changed. Uh, for the for, probably, I wouldn't say for the good or the bad, the Divas match changing. It depends how you look at it. Uh, but the Tag Team title was changing probably for the good. I'd say yeah. So it was overall a good. It was a good baby. It yeah. was. I enjoyed it. So Same we were. It. it was the exact opposite of SummerSlam. The SummerSlam had US, IC, and the WWE titles up for grabs. Yeah. And, wait, was the US up for grabs? I can't remember, actually, now. But, you know what I mean, either way. Um, I think it might have been, I don't know, what, SummerSlam? Yeah, yeah, but either way, though, you know what I mean? And then all those titles changed hands, including the Divas and whatnot. Oh, yeah. And then, like, yeah. this one's been kind of the opposite, because there was no oh, 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 there was no tag, ma- no tag team it's... title match, that's what I was going to say, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And this was the exact mean... opposite way around. The tag, really is, tag, team yeah. title, tag team title match was the whole human title match on the entire card. card. Yeah. And then, and then you know, you know uh, uh, I can hear I myself, can hear myself on your side. Right. Sorry, 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 my thing came out. Yeah, my bad. So go on. Ugh, your thing came out, did it? <laughs> but yeah. Right, right, right. So exact, exact, exact opposite this time. You know, there's only, the only title match was the tag title match, and there's, you know. Oh, wait, no, the yeah. Divas won as well. Okay, my, my bad. But, yeah, I think no, we're just getting no, into confusing territory here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I no WWE, no IC, and no US title match. Yeah, crazy. No, I mean we're not going to have no WWE for a while now because what Brock Lesnar apparently not making no return to I think the Royal Rumble yeah. due to the dud shoots a lot. Say Royal Rumble, or, I don't know, whatever. It, I think whatever it really feels like. Really I really, I really don't want him to drop it to John Cena, but I really hope he drops it when he comes back at Royal Rumble because you know this yeah, shit of yeah. just not being there at all is fucking. It's it, good to have a nice fine, break. It worked, it worked fine honest, with The Rock but, when he did it, like yeah. in 2013, because it was only a two month program and he was at least at you know the, mid, yeah, the, like, the in between pay per view. I like that they're taking a break from the main title to give retribution to other titles because obviously now Luke Harper is the, is the Intercontinental title. He won it off Dolph Ziggler. That's good. We've got new tag team champions, we've got new Divas champions, and also we've got a new United States champion. Not a lot of fans of Rusev, obviously not. But I enjoy it because obviously I, I think that Irish Cena deserved to lose that fucking belt. 
to be honest, but there we go. True, true. But it's Bye good. Well. It's good. It's good to see a little bit of distance. Um, I would like it a bit more if Brock was on Raw a little bit more, even if he wasn't wrestling. I would like him to make an actual appearance instead of just appearing like what three times a year. You know, yeah, but uh, uh, I, I see the contract they have apparently. Lesnar gets paid five million a year just for fucking four matches. It's like. Yeah, fair enough, in UFC, that's a whole different thing, <coughs> but in WWF, he is getting paid that. And it's no, just like... Well, I can't imagine what Cena get paid, he must get paid crazy money as I well. I think it's like a yeah. seven, he, he gets like seven million a year, but to be fair to Cena, at least Cena fucking works the year rather than just... Yeah, exactly, that's what I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. And he does all that make-a-wish as well and stuff. I mean, I know, I mean, he could say no, I mean, he doesn't have to, like, he doesn't have to go to a giant, dying kid's knees, does he? I mean, at the end of the day, they obviously ask him, so... I really, so, yeah, so I really, that, I really can't wait for the, the heel turn that the IWC really wants Cena to do, which will never happen. No, and no, no. <laughs> the best perfect time to do it do it to a make a wish foundation yeah. kid you know, do, yeah, do exactly. an F.U. You know, yeah, exactly. oh, yeah, ah, that's it Zach Gowan you know because wasn't Zach wouldn't Zach Gowan have been one at one point you know when he was a child because yeah. uh, remember he had, if anyone knows anything about Zach Gowan from 2003 then you'll know what the fuck I'm on about but if you don't oh yeah Zach Gowan yeah the one with one leg yeah, yeah. one leg wrestler that, imagine that you know you know sitting you know, Seen as doing a Make a Wish Foundation, Zach Gowan's there. He's like, "Hey, dude, F- gives him an nephew," and it's just like, "He'll, <laughs> he'll see her." You know? Oh, exactly. Oh, he does what Willie Piper does and rip the leg off. And like, dude, that was mechanically on. <laughs> Pardon <It's>... me. <laughs> you know, so Zach Gowan was a fucking weird person to have. I can't believe they even did that. You know, but he was good for what he was. The yeah, fact that he, he held his own, he held his own in the ring, having uh, one fucking leg. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he really, fucking hell, he really did. I remember being so impressed, you know, the fact that he's you know, a man with one leg can, you know, bounce around in the ring a lot more than most wrestlers with good, two, two good legs, you know what I mean? It's just weird to say. Right, we're going to move on. It's just gone past the time limit, but we'll stretch it a little bit longer, just for the pure sake of it, because we have a little bit more talking. I uh, hope you've enjoyed our Survivor Series talk. Again, comment, rate, whatever, say what you thought. So obviously we would give it an 8 out of 10, what would you give it? So we're going to move on what we said uh, the network and CM Punk's podcast oh yeah you can hang on two seconds you can wonder if it is over now it doesn't matter so yeah there we go um, yeah so um, right so the network did not launch in the UK nope. uh, is anyone surprised at this truthfully I'm not and I'm pretty sure well, my the, the, host, the, the biggest yeah. kick in the balls was it was pulled 20 minutes before and you know. yeah literally the or the biggest kick in the bollock for me but yeah the huge you know massive kick in the groin where probably new rock boots were probably the biggest fucking spikes on the end of it yes it was horrible I was honestly it was getting closer and closer to the time and I thought, yeah, I was jelly get I'm not gonna lie, I was feeling a bit excited, you know. I know I can all, I know a lot of people just get it the US way and stuff like that, but I mean it, at the end of the day it is illegal to kind of get it like that way. I'm not I'm not dropping eyes on you. <laughs> but I mean like you know, so there yeah, we go. I don't give a fuck, you know, because um, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I I had the network for six months, I did it with the VPN stuff and whatnot, and it was you know, fake details, I had to use my PayPal. Pain in the fucking ass. And I was like, cool. All right. Well, they're gonna bring it over to England now, and they're taking the six month subscription off. Cool. I, I'll do it from month to month then. You know, it's like I'll probably yeah buy some buy it for Survivor Series. You know, and oh, like and definitely for WrestleMania. But then yeah. now they're doing. Apparently, they're gonna Sky is gonna be doing uh, what Canada has. So basically, they just have a sh- a channel that shows the network all day long. No, 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 no. Sky them did a Sky said themselves in a new report that that was bollocks. That they're never gonna do that. That was li- that was a lie. Sky themselves did. They come forward with a new interview of information, and Sky come forward and said that the TV, the whole yeah, that channel idea, of the network. No, that's not gonna happen. That's oh, not gonna happen. So- so, yeah. We're getting nothing over here at all. But so basically, yeah, I would have what? gladly, you know, but you know, I would have gladly, no, no, no. gladly paid for the network over here, you know, because I pay for the network for the. Probably cheaper. Split. Yeah. Well, no, it works out about the same because because conversion rate, I was paying about six pound odd. Uh, yeah. So, I uh, vice versa. I think. <laughs> hey, if you think about it. Do you think the reason they probably pulled out work it was because they can't do the nine ninety nine joke anymore because it it'd be like six pound <laughs> twenty odd. <laughs> Only six pound twenty. Yeah, yeah, someone else. Imagine someone if that was that. the whole thing. That someone was the whole had thing. that. Yeah. Sorry, after you. 
No, no, so someone had that on the sign when we were going to London, and he said six ninety five or whatever, or six ninety nine, and not nine ninety nine, you know, because so many, so many people in the UK thought it was actually going to be nine ninety nine, like ten pounds. Now I saw some comments saying, "Oh, I'm not paying ten pounds for the network." I was like, "You clearly have no idea about the euro, do you? You have no idea of US currency whatsoever." You know, clearly, you know, you need to go back. Yeah. Find someone, go back to school, or get mummy and daddy to teach you the difference between American money to UK money. Yeah, it's not going to be ten pounds. And no offense to WWE, but the network is not fucking worth ten pounds. No matter how many pay per views, old things you've given us, it's not worth ten pounds. Six quid is the most. So it didn't come out. Um, yeah, it was going to be as 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 Jack said, it was going to be made into a channel. Uh, Sky came forward and said that's bollocks. I think they did, and anyway, I'm pretty sure they said to come forward that was bollocks because obviously it's not like you freed him if they make it a channel. And at the moment, I don't know what's going on. Um, they said it's on suspension or on hold indefinitely until they work something out. But what I want to know is why WWE must have known when they brought it to the UK they were doing the thing they were doing a network with a price there's a bear of giving it you know. You know, a thingy, not knowing that the provider in the UK is Sky, they do give out for pay per views and stuff like that. So, why did they not think about it? Why offer the network in a country when you knew the provider, the, your provider of the pay per views, was going to not be, was going to be a bit fucking angry about it? You know what I mean? And like the only reason Sky have got a problem with it is because of the pay per view. They'll lose money rate for box office. So, and um, probably other things as well, you know, because I know a lot of people. That's the same. As soon as the network comes out, they're going to drop Sky Sports. They're going to get rid of it, even though Raw Smackdown isn't on the network anyway. It's only the post show, so those people don't know fuck all. But there we go. Um, but WWE should have known this. They should have been fucking aware that they were going to do this. They should have made a deal with Sky, made a better deal with Sky, so they could have got their money back. I don't know if we're ever going to get the network now at all. I don't know if we ever are. Um, and it sucks. I reckon they're going to at least try and put, uh, push for it for WrestleMania next year because. If they manage to do that, they'll get a shitload of buys, won't they, for, at least for WrestleMania. I just wish there was a way that, you know, I, I mean, I'm pissed off because, man, and then there was people... Yeah. It, Likewise, that's why I watched Survivor Series for a stream, I'm not proud of it, but the thing is, I technically did nothing wrong because the network was supposed to be free that month anyway, wasn't it? So. <laughs> exactly, that, well, that pay-per-view was supposed to be free that month, so I suppose watching the stream doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, so, the you know, the stream was actually of, from the network, so, yeah. Oh yeah, I suppose that's I, right. <laughs> I don't intend to do any more like that. It was just basically, uh, you know, it was my really shitty way of sticking it to the WWE. Like, fuck you, I'm doing a stream. Fuck you for. Uh, I, 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 I paid for it anyway, man. I mean, service is as good. It was worth the money, in my opinion. So that's what. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It turns out it was worth the money. And hell, if I had Sky, I would have. Uh, yeah, I yeah, paid yeah exactly, man. If it's, the network it's, came it's, out, it's I would have gladly paid for that too. You know. Yeah, so. Man, it just, I'm pissed off because I wish they just sort it out. WWE knew their deal with Sky, they knew that Sky would lose out on box offices, and you can't just, Vincent, man, you can't just make a network, bring it to a country where obviously we don't have AT&T over here, we don't have Comcast, we don't have anything, we have Sky. You've made a deal with Sky, they get revenue of hosting your channel, your, 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 your programming on their site, so they get money for that as well as them, and now obviously you're giving pay per views out on the network network device for less than money so Sky obviously loses out so I can see why Sky are going what the fuck so I don't know if they've been like breached or whatever there was another report saying someone said on the group of mine that, oh, that they were going to let Virgin Media deal with it or that they were going to take over with it I don't know the channel thing but that was obviously bullshit yeah. um, but I don't know what's going on I, I can I don't know how they're going to sort this out and it sucks because people in the UK who have not done the, the piracy way are now losing out really and the worst our network chance to start it and rolling that a lot of them were cut out and stuff but you know I'm glad, I'm glad they did it that was a plan that they were going to say that I'm glad they did you know, um, but it sucks. I'm still pissed off about it because we should be fucking getting it, you know. And I don't even know if they even do anything anymore. They've sat down with Sky and they've had words of Sky. I've had people on groups and that say they phoned up Sky and asked them, you know, what what's going on, you know. Are, are you going to sort it and what's going on? But, you know, we're going to be... I think we're going to be networkless for quite a while, man. It's like, not like we need a network because I've got most of the old style pay per views anyway on the network anyway, uh, on DVD anyway, and I buy most of the pay per views because I have Sky, so I see most of the pay per views. So I don't really think the network's going to be much useful to me. But I like some of the I like some of the specials that they show. So, so yeah. yeah. All I can say is bollocks. You know, so anyway, move on a little bit. Just one little bit more before we go. Uh, CM Punk, uh, we've talked a lot about it here, so yeah, so we won't he did... say too much about it now. But we will say this: if you haven't heard it, or listened to it already, 
fucking give it a listen because it is it's two hours long but it's fucking well worth it because uh, it's Punk, well worth it yeah because Punk finally I mean, lets loose about what actually happened about his walkout and shit and yeah. the fucking well, cunts yeah. at WWE have basically been to yeah. him before and, and after his leaving yeah they're doctors as well he basically nearly died he could have died with that thing on his back and oh, they didn't yeah yeah, and, and like, he went to eight days doctor, and it, that sorted him out. Um, oh, yeah, you know? and uh, basically it was, it was a large lump on his back, and then the doctor, like, squished it, and it exploded, you know, he, like, shot, shot, the pus shot up to the ceiling. Oh, oh yeah, I know, that sounds so good, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'm, one of, I'm one of those sickos who likes watching them cis pop videos on YouTube. <laughs> so, Dude, like, just, I was going to have some food after so, this. Oh, so just hearing that about punk, it's like, oh, yeah. Dude, stop, Lee. I want to eat, you know, versus the fucking night. But yeah, he is right. It is worth a check out. He said, obviously, he didn't walk out. He did technically walk out. He was suspended. He was fired. He got some terminate patient papers on his wedding day. He says, uh, basically, Vincent Mann phoned him up when he came at hospital today uh, about wanting him to sling him straight in the match with a wrestler that he doesn't like. He didn't like working with right back. Uh, but he openly makes his friends with John Cena and some other people like that. But it, it is worth an interview. Look, mm. uh, I suppose like, if Pete, if Jack remembers, I suppose you could put the link to the podcast down in the description if people have not seen it. But I'm sure everyone's probably seen it now anyway because it went viral. So yeah, um, it broke the fucking internet. It pretty much did, yeah. yeah. And it probably broke the internet better than fucking Kim Kardashian's fucking massive ass did. You know, but you know, there we go. So. But yeah, it is good. It's worth a check out. So thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to me and thinking again. I've said this before. It might sound like we slag off the WWE a lot of the time or go off on, on subjects, but it's not. Um, yeah, it's just our opinions and stuff. A lot of people. I see a lot of people on YouTube as well. They slag off Vince McMahon and stuff because of the network and stuff, you know. But we are fans of it. So we'll see you for TLC. We'll be back yeah, to TLC, yeah. which is um. So when did you say date for DLC was? Sorry. Um, was I think it's there? the fourteenth uh, of December. Uh, and we'll have, to, we'll have to double check on that. But they said it was basically three weeks after Survivor Series. Yeah, and Survivor Series also want to stay. Also had the best promo. Uh, um, go on and on and on. I love that promo. It was good. It was good. The fact that we were watching it, we went to the pub to watch Main Night Game. I know you don't care, but yeah, they had that show up on the big screen. I was like, yay! So there we go. Right. So yeah. So, so thank you. For ju- that's no, me, me for Pete the Metalhead, and of course, uh, my ever lovely co host. Me, of Devon Raven, I need to learn to shut up a little bit more. Hell <laughs> yeah, motherfucker! <laughs> shut your mouth! Before yeah. I spank your ass! Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I turned it a little more erotic towards the end there. I hope you liked yeah. it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> See you next time. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye.